Hello, in this video, I'll discuss the concept of synchronization. The idea behind synchronization is we have devices that are connected to our microcontroller. They could be different devices connected to our microcontroller. And this device, these devices, device A, let's say device B, devices tend to be typically slower than the microcontroller the simple simple orders of magnitude will make sense if your your microcontroller operates in the megahertz re region most um, devices operate in um, this is in the tens of megahertz and this is uh, in kilohertz too uh, you single digit megahertz uh, like maybe uh, one to four megahertz so typically what that means is that we have a speed mismatch that is we have a fast processor interfacing with a slow device now it can happen the other way also but we won't worry about those uh, those kinds of scenarios here so what that means is when a fast processor is interfacing with a slow device the fast processor can overwhelm the slow device so what we need is some mechanism by which the processor does not overwhelm the the device that is the processor uh, can send send commands for example can send commands or data doesn't matter faster than the device can handle That's typically possible in a scenario like we we are right now, where where we have a ST seventy seven thirty five, the Citronix uh, display device, and we are communicating. Uh, let's say this is a Citronix device; it we're communicating with it, and um, and and we have a fast processor which is currently running, let's say, at eighty megahertz, and the Citronix device probably operates at uh, four megahertz or uh, the bandwidth it can support is around four megabits per second so so uh, because our processor can can operate much faster than that we can be sending commands faster than the than the device can handle so how do we make sure we we cope with the speed mismatch um, so um, the speed mismatch can occur between uh, input device or an output device. The example that we are just talking about, ST7735, is an output device because we we write to it. Uh, an input device could be, for example, a disk, uh, uh, a disk that from which we read. Disks are both input and output, but disk could be an example of something that we read from. Uh, it could be, for example, an accelerometer. that we are reading information from. If you try to get inputs from an accelerometer faster than it can respond, then we will be overpowering it. So, so here's what the problem looks like as a timing diagram. So on an input, we could we have an input device, software is our program that's running, and what typically happens is, um, is our software is ready to read at some point, but it has to wait because the device is busy, and and the device is currently ready at this point it has it is ready and the device um, and the software reads it and it and it processes whatever it's read it read some data here and it's going to process that data process the data it fi it finishes processing and it's ready to read new data but Though it is ready here, the software is ready here, the device is not ready because the device is still busy, busy producing, if you will, that, that data. So the, dev the device is not ready with the data, so you have to wait for it. And then, and then once the device is ready, you can read it and 
process it and repeat this process. Um, this is this is the scenario of output where we are we are um, uh, looking to write something to the device, but the device is busy, so we wait for the device to become not busy. Um, which is that is that it's sorry it's uh, prior to this point it was busy it is ready here and so we generate the data we write the data the data is finished writing we generate new data but again we here we have to pause we have to pause because though we generated the data we are not ready to write we're only going to be ready to write once the device stops being busy so once the device is not busy anymore we can write new data so this is the process by which we synchronize now um, the question really is is how do we decide when to read and when to when to read or write um, so there's think of this as 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 a scenario where the processor and the device have have to negotiate if you will uh, a, a mechanism by which they're going to make sure that they don't over uh, the processor doesn't overwhelm the other so there are three uh, modes, if you will, of synchronization possible. Um, the simplest form of synchronization uh, is what is called blind cycle synchronization. Uh, the second form of synchronization is busy wait synchronization. And the third is an interrupt based synchronization. Now, in some systems, all three are possible. Uh, typically, the most more primitive systems are only allow a blind cycle synch synchronization. Uh, slightly more sophisticated systems will allow a busy wait, and um, the best systems will support uh, interrupt-based synchronization. So let's understand how these how these three mechanisms work. So, um, so to to kind of make these work we will assume that our device whatever our device is can be in two states it can be either busy or it can be ready uh, busy meaning that it's busy and not ready to uh, accept inputs or uh, or produce outputs um, and ready is when it's ready and then we can actually give it in give it the input that it uh, write the input or read read uh, sorry write write the output or read the input so so the simplest uh, scenario can be something like this where we want to um, uh, get input so we'll say read input is the function or if it's re or it can be right output that is we will let's keep it simple we're just writing some data out to the device and it's a character data read input is just going to return whatever the input is being read so the question is what code do we put here and so the first scenario as i said is a blind cycle synchronization in blind cycle synchronization I'm gonna put a picture here in blind cycle synchronization on input uh, this is the input scenario and this is the output scenario input scenario we Whenever we're ready to we're ready to read the input, we wait for a fixed amount of time and we read the data. The important thing is how do we know how long to wait? So typically we get this information, we gather this information, information provided by the device manufacturer in the provided in the data sheet. Um, so the data sheet will say that the device uh, between between inputs, the device has to uh, has to uh, will take a certain amount of time. Maybe it, it, maybe the data sheet says that it takes hundred milliseconds. Let's say so we always wait for hundred milliseconds, and that guarantees that whatever it was doing, whatever input it was previously. Um, uh, 
whatever read was previously happening it's done uh, it's definitely guaranteed to be busy, uh, be be ready so we can we can read the data and return so what ends up happening uh, on the on the output side similarly is um, similarly is we we again um, uh, wait for a certain amount of time again this is also provided in the data sheet and we uh, when we are finished we we uh, sorry we we wait for a certain amount of time after we write the data and then we we are sure that the data has been um, uh, we want to make sure that the data has been processed. So because output, we wait for a fixed amount of time and then we return. So that the next time I write any output, uh, I'm guaranteed that it will be it will be uh, available. Um, the device will not be busy. So here's another scenario. If the device is capable of supporting some sort of a flagging mechanism so it has let's say a flag mechanism where it the flag indicates whether it's busy or ready and if such a flag is available it's typically a memory mapped device register in some memory mapped device register we find it for example in lab in this particular lab, which is lab seven, um, the uh, there is a register called the SSI zero D uh, um, SSI DO SRR register, which is a status register, and the status register has has bits which are bit four and bit one, and each of them is a ready or uh, ready, uh, uh, ready or busy flag. One is for reading and one is for writing. But we're, we're uh, one is for commands and one is for data. But you'll look at the right data and right command and find out what which is what. But the bottom line is that that if I want to do read or write, I will first check the status bit, whatever that status bit is, this flag, if you will, the flag. If it's busy, then I keep checking repeatedly so this is the repeated check i perform i i mostly am in this step most of the time and i repeat this process and eventually when i find that it is ready then i'm going to read the data and return it uh, the same thing applies for my for my output also i always check the status and if i if the status is busy i keep keep polling uh, repeatedly polling the polling the register to find out whether it's busy and if it's not busy and it's ready then I can perform the operation whether it's a read or write operation. Um, this is definitely uh, better than the blind cycle because blind cycle synchronization we try we try to err on the side of caution and we uh, we use a, a delay which is conservative in some sense whereas here we know precisely when the device is is uh, ready and we just get that information from a flag and we um, move on with whatever our operation is. So the third form of synchronization is, uh, is as we said, the interrupt-based synchronization. And in interrupt-based synchronization, uh, we, we will, uh, let's, we will first, um, uh, create a data structure of some kind because the way interrupts work is uh, is is we we have a buffer of some kind uh, because interrupts work on the idea of threads this is what is called the background thread which is basically our ISR and this is your foreground thread And the idea behind interrupts again is that we, when 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 we want to get a, when we want to perform some input operation, when you want to receive input, we will first check and see if the FIFO has anything. The FIFO here, the buffer is called a first in first out. That's simply the order in which uh, things are put, or the order in which things are extracted. So we check 
if the FIFO is empty. If the FIFO is empty, we repeatedly check again and again whether the FIFO is empty. When the FIFO is, uh, is not empty and there's some data available, we get the data from the FIFO. Uh, so so in, in this particular scenario, this is this is still this still looks like we are polling, but the idea here is that we don't really have to do this operation of uh, of uh, of repeatedly checking. If there's no data, you could just come back and say there's no data right now, and and you can go back and check again if there is data. Um, so you don't have to be blocked. But the background thread, when when data is actually available, so now what's going to happen is our microcontroller, when talking to our device, our device can actually talk back. It can cause an interrupt. So when the device actually is, is, it has the data, uh, it will say, I, have, I, I, am, I am ready, ready with data. So you run the ISR, ISR reads the data, and it adds the data to the FIFO. It, this is called a put operation. We put the data in the FIFO so that when, whenever the pro foreground thread is ready to receive, it is, doesn't have to be, be in sync. It will simply read the data from the buffer. So that guy reads the data when it needs it. So, so in some sense, if you were to compare the three, which is blind cycle versus, versus busy wait versus interrupt, we can say that this is typically conservative. And so uh, the latency and I'll tell you what latency we mean. Latency is high because we are we are erring on the side of cons caution. Here, the latency is tight, but there's a lot of waste, wasted CPU cycles because you're twiddling your thumbs, polling and checking the flag. Whereas with interrupts, the latency is tight and there is no waste of CPU cycles. So a lot of lot of systems that guarantee that need guarantee these systems are called real-time systems. Real-time systems are systems where we want a guarantee on the worst case, worst case response time these systems typically uh, use some sort of uh, interrupt based mechanism. Uh, re real time systems uh, both want guarantees on response time and also guarantee on bandwidth. Those are two ways of looking a uh, guarantee of bandwidth. Bandwidth is some bytes per second. We want some data transfer of some bytes per second and we want a guaranteed bandwidth. And when we want guarantees, uh, it's best to use a system that has, um, that has a tight latency. Uh, latency can be defined as as uh, it could be on input or output. And the idea behind latency is it's the time when when input slash output is is ready or available to the time the software uh, actually gets the gets or um, in the case of input or gets or puts data. This is all we have for synchronization.